The following macros are special ones that are used by the Lear script to deal with a couple of convenience functions. The author information is visible within the information panel as well as on the course card on the home screen. Use a semicolon to separate multiple authors. This information is shown on the course card at the home screen. It should contain a short and precise description of your course. This macro will only display one paragraph, even if you define more content. A convenience function that can be used to show the latest update time to the user. This is also displayed in the information panel. To add contact information that will be displayed in the information panel, you can include it in your LIA script document. This contact information can also be overridden for specific sections if needed. The logo definition requires a URL of an image, whether absolute or relative. It is used to define a background image for the course card at the home screen. Additionally, all base information is passed to this visualization too. The logo definition requires a URL of an image, whether absolute or relative. If you want to get rid of our hummingbird icon and insert your own, use this to refer to a relative or absolute image URL. This can also be used for styling purposes to add to every slide its own icon. Attribution is an important issue. By using the attribute command, you can define the attribution that is shown within the info field within the navigation panel. Therefore, this macro is the appropriate way to say thank you or to add license information. These elements also get imported if you import the functionality from another course. A good attribution might look like the following examples. When you package your course into a SCORM project and upload it to an LMS, the information about the original repository is lost. However, if you want to attract contributors, you can preserve this source information by adding it to your document's head. Additionally, Lear script will automatically attempt to infer the base project from resources on GitHub, GitLab, and previously Dropbox. Set the internationalization of the course. This will configure basic button information, titles, hints, etc. This information is also utilized if a user changes the language with the Google Translator. The currently available languages are defined here. We use language codes for internationalization, similar to top-level domains. Set the narrator voice for your course speaker. The voice is provided by responsivevoice.org, which is free for non-commercial educational content, or directly by your browser. The list below shows all currently available voices and languages. As defined in section comments, text-to-speech, this value can be set globally, defaults to English, and can be changed for slide and text-to-speech output as well. Lea script will attempt to utilize the default browser text-to-speech support, and if your browser does not support it, it will switch to responsivevoice.org. You can manually switch between these two variants. Note that not all voices are supported equally, and the quality may vary between different operating systems and browsers. If you already have translated versions of your course or know where they can be found, use this macro. Simply add the name and the URL. These links will also be visible within the information panel of your course. The font macro allows you to integrate various fonts for any kind of language, whether dead or alive. To do this, 
you need to load the CSS font with the link command and then insert the font by separating all font names with commas. Even if the font is not installed on your system, the browser will correctly load and display it. Here is a complete guide on loading and experimenting with external fonts in the browser. A very important piece of information is the version. It follows the major, minor, patch notion. If you are just starting to develop a course, you can leave this out, and you will be in some kind of development version. As long as you are in major version 0, the course should be passed every time it is loaded, or if your user is offline, the content will be loaded from the cache. This setup is suitable for small courses without persistent content. However, if you include executable code or quizzes and want to store this state within the browser's index.db, you will need to switch to a major version of 1. Therefore, if your course is ready or very large, it might make sense to define a major version, such as 1.0.12. The benefit of this is that every time the user loads the course, the app tries to download the raw markdown file and then checks the version information. If the version is the same as the one currently stored within index.db, then it does not require pre-processing the entire document again. Instead, it directly loads the pre-processed version. This is especially useful for smartphones. So how to change the version information? If you're making minor adjustments like fixing typos or updating static content, simply increase the patch element. If you're adding slides to the end of your document, you can increase the minor version number. Major version changes are necessary if you alter the structure of your document, especially by moving quizzes or code. Persistent state information is stored within index.db, so moving code or quizzes from one slide to another could potentially disrupt previous states. In such cases, major version changes are required, which will result in a new version being stored in index.db, while the old code, state remains available and can be restored. If you need to load additional CSS files, use the link command followed by the URL of your stylesheet. Some JavaScript imports might also require additional CSS definitions. Similar to import or script, you can load multiple files. If you are creating a template and need to pass this information to all other courses that import yours, use link. If you only want to change the appearance of some of your elements, use style. For more information on how to define custom styles, check out the following link. Script tags cannot load external JavaScript resources. Instead, use the script command in the main header to load external resources. This works for relative references too. The execution of at onload and all script tags is delayed until all external references have been loaded. You can import the main macros of other courses simply by using the import command, followed by the raw URL of the foreign course. You can import various different courses, and every URL will be loaded before the course is finally rendered. Only the definitions in the main header are loaded, including script, link, macros, attribute, and onload.
you can see an overview of all currently supported templates hosted on GitHub. Each course describes its macros and how to apply them. Currently, only the content of the imported course gets loaded, so it's not possible to load a course correctly if it references other courses. Add the macro at communic Add the macro. You can change the default style of your document. If you prefer a traditional layout without interactive elements, you can set the mode to textbook. Alternatively, you can opt for an interactive presentation or slides with comments included, to engage your audience with animations. The three modes are accessible via the mode selector button located at the upper right corner of the document. The default mode is determined by the user settings. You can adjust the default appearance of your document, opting for either dark mode or light mode. It's important to note that this customization will not override the user's preferences. The default mode is determined by the user settings. If you want to disable the classroom functionality for your course or within your SCORM export, then turn the classroom feature of, by default it is activated. For more information on how to open classrooms see section classroom experience. To disable sharing, if your browser supports it and to remove the presented QR code, you can turn off this feature with the following command. By default, it is activated. If you are giving a language course and want to prevent cheating by disabling the auto-translation function offered by Google, then set translate with Google to false. Sometimes it might be necessary to preload some JavaScript code that gets executed before the course is loaded, or you want to define some global functions that can be used everywhere afterward. Onload functions similarly to its HTML counterpart and is used to accomplish this task. In contrast to link where you refer to external CSS resources, you can also directly insert CSS settings. These are loaded faster, directly during the parsing process, which reduces glitches, and they are not shared if the document gets imported. The example adds an animated transition to every slide. Headers, colors, and everything Lia script related can be modified as well. Try out this example. Even Lear script will destroy all elements when a new slide is opened. As a result, videos and sounds stop playing, iframes are purged, etc. However, some external functionality, such as scripts that modify the DOM, create certain elements, and adapt their behavior, will require their content to persist across slides. This is why the preservation macro was introduced, to maintain all DOM elements on a slide, even though they are hidden when another slide is opened. This can be set globally, but you can also adjust the global setting on a per slide basis. By default, this persistence feature is turned off. If your extension behaves oddly when you leave and re-enter a slide, 
trying out this option might be the right choice. This macro is limited to use within the document and cannot be used within the header. There are occasions when it becomes necessary to assign unique identifiers for accessing specific HTML nodes without manually naming each one. In such situations, hidden macros utilizing at UID can be quite useful. When invoked, at UID generates a unique identifier each time it is called. In this example, at eval invokes another macro and passes the result of at UID as the first parameter. The input of at zero serves as the second parameter. Consequently, at one in the second macro call will be replaced with this input. This is a helper function that enables the definition of custom macros for KTEX formulas on both the global and local scale. Additionally, you can define custom macros, as it is supported by KTEX. However, there are currently two options to define macros, which can be either local or global. Local macros can be defined directly within the formula environment. Even if you use something like GDEF, which stands for Global Define, these macros will only affect the local formula. The reason for this is, that in contrast to other markdown renderers, LIA script will only pass and display the current slide, section. A global definition on slide 100 will not affect the formulas on slide 12. However, if you want to define a custom set of macros and reuse them within all of your formulas, you will have to define them within the main comment of your document. Use the formula macro, whereby the first word defines the macro name, the starting backslash is optional, and the remainder is used as the body. All of these macros are then passed to every formula while rendering, see therefore the comments at. Additionally, it is possible to override global formulas or define new ones per slide. In the example below, the new formula definition for foo will be used, while bar remains as it is. However, if you switch to another slide, the previously global definition of foo is used again. Unfortunately, it is currently not possible to use both types of macros within one formula. If there are local macro definitions, then no global macros are passed. Thus, the following formula will result in an error since the global bar is not defined. Passing macros as rendering options and defining local ones currently result in KTEX errors. This macro should only be this macro should only be used within script tags, typically associated with executable code blocks, projects, quizzes, surveys, tasks, and standalone scripts. It serves as a placeholder for the current user input and may yield different results based on the context. This macro is specifically intended for use in executable code blocks. It should be added to the last code block in a project's head section to designate a textual output as the default output for execution.